Oh, hey, you saw the title. What are we waiting for? Let's do this. So, when last we saw this beast, I desoldered and removed capacitor C8 so I can turn it over and see what capacitor that was because the markings were on the underside the way they soldered it on there. And as it turned out, it's a 16 volt 10 microfarad. And that is the same as many of these on here. Unfortunately, I was unable to find some the same exact size, but I got I, I got some that are the same value. So I got these here. These are 16 volt, 10 microfarad, and these are the sub miniature. So I guess I needed the miniature. <laughs> anyway, this is what I could find, and I don't believe form factor really matters as long as the values are right. And we're going to find out, I suppose. Where did all this dust come? This came from the bar. I got a couple new tools. Look at my Dollar Tree toolbox I keep them in, huh? Well, the snap-on and the general toolboxes don't fit in the room very well, so I just keep these for simple, small stuff. But look at here. I got me some anti-static brushes. So we can kind of brush this off. I had it cleaner than them. Let's see, what would young Pete use? Ta ta! <laughs> Got me the young Pete brush. Maybe one of these. That ought to suffice. Let's put the broom away for now. Oh, I got a desolder. Solder sucker. How about that? So, use that. Got my old pick I brought in from the shed. Iron. Yeah. Older. Oh, here's my, I might need my flux can for the assembly. I hope I have enough solder, I don't know. We'll find out. It's not enough, we'll have to buy more and table the project till then. I got a brand new desolder wick with the uh, sucker, solder sucker thing. But I also had one that was already in process, so I'd rather just use that first. Alright, I think that's all the tools we need. Oh, I, I got this sponge. I'll probably go wet that. Set it up somewhere to clean the tip of the soldering iron. A little moisten that, huh? A little water on it swelled right up for me. <laughs> awesome. Now, sure, it would be cool if this thing could work again. It was neat to have and look at and all that, but it'd be even cooler if we could actually use it, wouldn't it? I'm so glad I have this camera, that way when I talk to myself I don't look quite so insane. Alright, so this is pointing to this way for the negative. And on the board the positive is here. So we want to turn it this way. Before I do that, I'd like to get my flex pin and apply some flux. And I want some here. Here and here. Okay, we got our arrow pointing to the left and the plus on the right, so I guess that's right. This is going to be a little ugly because, like I say, I don't really do this. But we'll get it figured out. Alright, yeah. It's on the board, so we're just going to bend the eggs out a little bit to hold it in place. Let's see if we can get her soldered in. Let's do a little tinning here. I'd be lying if I told you I knew what I was doing. I'm just trying to copy what I see others do. I think if people were honest, more people would admit that too. So we'll let that recover from the sponge for a second or two and then we'll try this. I keep the one side. So I'll do that. Oh, okay. I actually 
think that's pretty good. I'm going to cut the legs off. And then we'll have another look and we can see better. See if I need to do any more solder. I have a very minute amount of solder here this time. I'm going to go crazy like last time. It's good to step out of your comfort zone, do things you don't know how to do. Expand your mind. Yeah, it'll work. <laughs> it's solder. Alrighty. This is going to take too long. We got to pick up the tempo. I'm the nerves a little bit. I don't know why I'm getting nervous. The damn thing doesn't work anyway. I'm going to break it. There you go. Yeah. You got it. Pants are just fine. Pretty. Quick down beat the screw. Quick spritz. Reading glasses and a magnifying glass. Hmm. This one's been leaking a little bit. There it goes. Pretty either. Down. Use our marker marks. Who knows? Maybe it doesn't even beep anymore. We'll find out. Okay. So Apple IIe is missing an I key. And I've made two attempts so far to get one. And also I noticed that the the key switch itself is broken, so the shaft is broken, so it won't hold a key. So, I, am, I managed to procure both an I key and a switch. Now, I had to order, well first I ordered one, I wasn't sure what I needed, so I ordered this one. And uh, I guess this is a, like a pale green with the white font. That wasn't right because mine are like a gray with a black font. So then uh, now the second one come in. This one's got a kind of a dark gray font. And it is kind of a gray color. But as one can see, well, it, I'll put it this way, it matches the space bar. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily match the other, uh, the other gray keys. So I don't know if it needs, maybe it needs to be retro brighted or what. At any rate, we have a gray-ish key <laughs> and it's going to go on the computer. Yeah, it might be a little yellowed. I don't know. I said that about the green one, too. And then my wife pointed out, well, yeah, that's got white paint on it, though. So, yeah. Obviously, it's not a match. Oh, this thing here has been a booger bear, let me tell you. Rounding up the right parts. So, anyway, we'll keep this uh, greenish key with the white font. For an emergency, I guess. With the other keys that don't... Uh, don't do me any good right now. So anyway, it's got the good keyboard, so that's the good that's the good part. Okay, so I guess uh, the next thing we do is pop these screws out of here. What is that mess? Oh my my! So I haven't had this part or cleaned it yet. So I shudder to think what we might find under here. We'll find it together. Cool. Alright. Now well, I guess we gotta try and figure out which one of these would be for the ice heat. Maybe these two here, I think. Mean. So it'd be the 
One, two, three, four, five, six, one over on the second row. One, two, three, four, five, six, one over. Get desoldered. Allegedly, that's ready to go. Let's see. It's case. Hmm. That wasn't so difficult. Okay, so pins go down at the bottom. All right, let's do a little cleanup with the uh, with the braid. Let's do a little cleanup with the old braid there. Nice. Flex pin. We hit the pins when we get them in there too. So pins at the bottom, huh? Okay. No, they go to the top. in place. Okay. All right, pins are sticking up. Put a little flux on them. That's easy enough. And now we saw it. Just give it the old Jan Bita spritz. Pass with the brush. All right, now that our uh, our key switch is all soldered in here, I'm good to go. Got the board cleaned up. Even took a brush and some cleaner. Cleaned this up. There's only one thing left to do. We got to put our new key cap on here. So. And it looks like all the fonts or all the letters are at the top of the key, so here we go. Get it on there and and it's on. It's one thing fixed on the Apple IIe. How about that? No more missing I key. It's a nice sound the keyboard too. Okay, we just got to mount it and we'll be done. As far as the uh, adjusting position and all that, it is adjustable, but I can use the witness marks, which are the marks that the screws made from the previous, the being previously installed. Let's see, I'll use my, my trusty rod here. Huh? There you go. Trusty paperweight that my daughter made me years and years and years ago. Started, then we'll snug them. That's the way we roll around here. So assuming it was right the last time it was installed, it should be right now because we lined up everything to where it was. 
since there's no reason to start from zero on something that uh, is not brand new, let's just see how it looks. Oh yeah, that's nice. Look at that. No more missing letters. Awesome. Now we can move on to the next project. So, you may remember, the well, very first thing we did we changed the, was get rid of that reflux capacitor. Then right after that, I messed up the composite video jack back here by trying to shove an RCA jack in there, which was the center part was too large, and I messed up the center pin. So I have a fix for that, kind of. And so what I did was cut this cable, cut the end off of it, and soldered it on right here. I got one piece right on the outside here where the ground is and then the power side I went ahead and soldered to this little pin that comes up through the board. I thought it was shorting out so I clipped it off of there. So I might have been able to fix it until I went and cut pieces off of it. I don't have the pieces anymore so there's no fixing this at this point. Uh, other than to replace the jack. I know there is a place somewhere where you can replace those because there's a company making brand new Apple II Plus boards and they've got this jack on them. But yeah, I don't really know where I would get that. I've looked, I've Googled, I mean I have had no luck finding it yet. So that's cool. So we're going to go to the next restaurant. There's going to be a little variation of what we've done thus far. So I bought these jacks here and it's just an RCA jack, right? So it's got a little lug here, it's got a little lug here. And what I'm thinking is, if I can get the center part of this out of here, then maybe I can put this right in the original bracket. And then we'll have an RCA jack that's attached to the motherboard. No more foolishness with the cord hanging out getting into trouble when you're carrying a computer around, moving it, whatever. So I think that will be the hot setup. So we got to cut the zip tie I just put on there. And it goes. And that's off of there. So then I guess we can... I guess we can just cut this off. Desolder the, the crap later. There we go. We get this all out of our way. I could drill it out, but I'd rather not if I can avoid it. Oh yeah, this is starting to work. I almost got this. There it is. Okay, we got it. So with that out of there, maybe we can put the new one on. Let's see. I guess we can use a black one. So if we put that in like so. Oh man, look at that. It's almost gonna, it's almost just gonna fit. How about that crap? So I don't even think I need this, because it's gonna be bolted to the part right here, right, so, let me just bend that a little bit, turn this over, I think I'll just solder it right here, just put a bridge of solder right there, I mean, piece of cake, so we got a washer and a nut. One second. It might have worked. It did. Quite diggity. Alright. With that. And that should have it. I'm going to probably. Put it off, put a little bit of solder right in here. 
And then I'll put a little solder right here, solder this together, and it'll be installed. How freaking cool is that? And then we'll have an RCA jack on the back of the Apple II that we could plug video cables into. Here we go. So here's a good shot from the top down that shows our completed repair. It's something to point with. So I put that little dab of solder there. That little pin there already went down into the motherboard. And so I just soldered up the uh, new jack, the end of that right there. And then right here where it bolted on, I didn't want it to come loose when you're busy twisting video cables out right so I went ahead and put some solder on the threads and also uh, between the nut and the uh, this little metal shield here too the ground piece so yeah I, I, I soldered that all up to complete the repair so I was on the reactive micro site the other day and I saw that they had a better upscaler and it is guaranteed more or less to work with the Apple II computer so here is pretty much what they sent me they also included this the kit also included this um, HDMI cable here Pretty happy with the quality of just about everything they sent. I think that this cable for the power could have been a little longer, but I mean, other than that, you know, that's neither here nor there. Now here is what I wanted to really talk about at this given moment. So the Reactive Micro one, the one you can get from them, see it's even got their name on it. Look at that. It says Reactive Micro right there. If you can catch it, I don't know. Might be too much glare. But you see the cables they sent. Now this is just a regular RCA cable, right? And this end is also a regular RCA cable. Now this one here is a little smaller round. And in this bundle is a really nice audio cable, right? But all of these, you notice the pins are the same size. So looking at this, I'm not seeing that this has a smaller pin in it, right? And allegedly this is a kit specifically aimed at Apple II owners. So I began to wonder, did I break the jack that was on the back of the Apple II? So I was looking through my pile of parts and whatnot, right? I got my old I got my new capacitors, a bunch of other little things that were piled around. I got the old Rifa. And I actually kept so I actually kept that pin that came out of the jack. Right? The one that I thought that I had broken. I think I'm ready to revise my hypothesis here. Now, if you look here, I suppose it's possible that that is indeed the case, but I'm beginning to really lean more when you look at the fact that this is the same size as this. Right? How much more likely is it that somebody broke a cable inside the jack and this is the center pin from somebody else's cable and so while my retrieval methods were all wrong it's not really that I did anything wrong as much as somebody had a broken cable in the jack when I got the computer unbeknownst to me so I don't know like I said from the beginning of this this is my first actual complete Apple II computer. The other one I have is just a case and of course it didn't have any of this on it so 
uh, you know, when you don't know, you don't know. But I'm really leaning towards the idea that this is just a centerpiece broken that was broken out of a uh, out of another cable. Point being, with the RCA jack I replace this with, this is complete repair. I, there's no reason to seek out another jack to make it, you know, compatible with other Apple IIs and all that. Because I believe now that all I ever had was a broken cable. And if you know about this, and you're looking at the video and you're yelling at me the whole time saying, you idiot, you idiot, um, hey, let me know. Do they just use a regular RCA jack in the back and all this nonsense about a special cable was just that? Or if they actually need a special cable, it would be great if you could let us all know. So... I got one more little trick I want to show you. So before I got my micro, uh, my reactive micro order, I had ordered this cable here. It's a pretty nice little video cable. It's a composite video cable, and I ordered it from Amazon. It's got some really nice metals in it, and it's nice thickness and all this, right? And so when I received it. I tried it with my current setup and of course no video. So just out of a sheer desperation. <laughs> now I was just curious if it would work with our Sanyo TV in here. And I plugged it into the Sanyo TV and lo and behold it worked. Lit right up on the screen Apple II, right? So that's when I realized I had a an incompatible upscaler and so I got this one from Reactive Micro instead and now I would like to show you our working Apple II E. Alright y'all so I got uh, everything hooked up we're just going to turn the power on. Are you seeing this? She works. Now last time I had it turned on it had a floppy disk in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do a hard reset. So yeah that makes it look pretty floppy. And we're going to do a soft reset. And there we go. We're ready to program some basic. huh? Yeah, I was gonna just do the ten, you know, the whole ten, <laughs> ten print this, and then twenty go to ten. Then you have to do a control C to break it, you know. But I decided to just go ahead and type up a loop. It's not that much more work. So let's run this thing. <laughs> How about that, huh? A working Apple II. And then, uh, just as a bonus, look at here. I ordered some keycaps from a guy on eBay. And he included with, uh, with my order uh, a bunch of stuff that he'd gotten at Kansas Fest. It was really cool. And among the freebies that he gave me, was this floppy disk here, which is the Master Diagnostics the Apple IIe. So I think we ought to put it in there and do a hard reset. What do you think? Okay, we'll go ahead and do that hard reset. So Apple Control Reset. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
Let's see, what's something quick we could do? I don't want to take too much time in this video because I don't want it to be too long. Let's run. Let's do the monitor routines. So seven, enter, return. Okay, monitor routines, one. And I guess we'll just do a quick test pattern. About that. Uh, let's try the skewing test. So anyway, without further ado, I want to thank you all for watching the video. And uh, if you followed this from the beginning, I want to thank you for sticking around to see the end, huh? Although this is not the end, I have also ordered a uh, floppy emu, or emu, em emu, <laughs> I want to call it emu because of how it's spelled, but I think an emu would be more proper because it's short for emulator. And we will be doing different things with this for sure. We're not finished by any means, but uh, we do have an operational Apple IIe. That's pretty fantastic. So, I think we're going to call and close this video out. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Y'all take care.